And now we're starting to see some discrepancies come out that I think are going to reveal what the channel has alleged that there was, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it, I think the Chinese hacked it. I think the Chinese have found the ability to hack communication satellites, GPS reporting satellites, in a way that keeps their fingerprints off of it, but can make a ship believe it's someplace it isn't, or traveling at a speed that it's not. And it can do that with both a container ship and a U.S. Navy ship, because they pretty much use the same systems. That was this channel back on the 19th of June, two days after this event with the Fitzgerald. I should learn to trust my instincts more, because when this initially came out, that was the first thing that I thought, was that the only possible way that a giant container ship and a Navy destroyer could have ended up in a collision out there 50 miles out to sea in the middle of the night was if they were getting bad information about where they were. And now we have confirmed that the signal, the GPS signal, AIS signal, that has been given to Vessel Finder that allegedly shows the ACX crystal is coming from a Class B transponder, which would not be aboard the ACX crystal. And if that's the case, we showed very clearly that they have been able to spoof these signals. This is that uh, website, uh, www.blackhat.com, Docs Asia. I will put it down in the description. Um, we used this a couple videos ago, that in 2014, this um, Dr. Balducci and two other guys showed how they could do this. And it's a laptop, a little Class B transponder, there's your amp, and then an antenna, how they can do this. And since the Navy has heretofore not provided any real data about the location of the Fitzgerald, they put a little crayon drawing generally showing kind of where they're alleging the Fitzgerald was. No actual confirmable GPS data with a drawing that looks like, you know, their fourth grader drew it, drew it. And then when they initially put it out, the time labels were all wrong and they had to withdraw, you know, pull it back and then fix it. That I think, honest to God, that's probably where we're, what we're looking at here is we're looking at a Chinese hack. Perhaps Russian, perhaps together. Because it's not something that's new. I mean, this was something in that video we, we, we covered. I mean, it was, there are multiple stories of this all over the place. And these aren't covering the same article here. These are different events at different times. And now most recently, We've seen this. This is the fourth day. An entire oil tanker, 13,000 tons of gasoline aboard, four days ago just went poof and disappeared off the coast of Africa. And they have yet to find it. Hell of a bomb, don't you think? Hell of a weapon. I mean, I'm gonna just spitball more than likely the gasoline is gonna go into the black market in Africa, but the ship itself could be one hell of a weapon as we have seen. And with the ability to spoof GPS signals and to jam GPS signals and show other vessels and Navy vessels that they might be someplace that they're actually not, would give them an incredible advantage. And this was back a while ago, but this was when an entire vessel just disappeared. It's a incredibly dangerous thing and an incredibly frightening thing, because if they can hold, and this is what I've always made about the allegation with Panama, and that's where these two investigations kind of come together is that if they could hold U.S. shipping hostage, especially down in the canal, with us not having any real ability to do anything about it, 
we, we would be in a position, we would be in a very difficult position, even if we tried to intervene militarily, if they're controlling GPS satellites, the military is slave to that as well. And this is very recently, too, that in that other article that I showed you, the, um, the one by Balducci, talks about um, malicious weather forecasting and tsunamis and earthquakes and all that is kind of subsumed under the, uh, the weather forecasters. And this is AccuWeather, and they've been hacked. All along the East Coast, people have been getting these warnings that are false and fake. You know, and then we saw the thing over in Hawaii where they had a fake missile warning. That could, you know, that could very well be, you know, that that could have been something where it was a hack, where they maybe actually did believe that there was a real missile. And they're showing the ability to do this. And this article here was from 2014. And it shows from soup to nuts how to do it. This little thing right here is their... Um, their control. This is what they're attacking. This is the GPS system that they didn't actually attack anybody. They're white hat hackers here that are showing how clearly this can be done. How they can do this. And you can guarantee if these guys know how to do it, the, the Russians and the Chinese for sure know how to do it. And you would have to then ask the question, well, why would the Russians and Chinese do it? Well, I think the reason we saw it last summer is, you know, we had just put a new administration in, and I think they wanted to send a signal to the new administration saying, look, we can do this. We have the ability to do this. The Chinese didn't want our destroyers anywhere near those reefs and those man-made islands. And they had threatened and threatened and threatened. And it's probably some kind of a technology that they you know, worked on together. You know, I saw this picture, and, you know, it says, you know, fake CPA, close point approach, trigger collision. I, the first thing I thought, this looks like a picture of that um, Italian pleasure craft that supposedly went, the, the captain was drunk or whatever, and uh, didn't know where it was, and it ran aground and tipped over and all this stuff, and that's the first thing I had thought, too, when I saw this, the initial story. And I'm like, there's no way this company that invested hundreds of millions of dollars into these giant floating revenue generators would have left that ship just to a drunk captain. They would have definitely had some other, you know, fail-safes built in that if there was ever a problem, that the computers could keep this ship from doing this. But if the information the computer is getting, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You know, they're all slave to that system, and if somebody's found a way to hack those systems, they can control the world. All phones, all electronic devices, everything is slave to those GPS satellites. And here's the thing, malicious weather forecasting. You know, and that includes earthquakes and tsunamis and all that kind of stuff. This would just be blocking access, the DDoS. And, you know, someone actually stepped up three, going on four years ago, and tried to sound the alarm on this. And say, this is what they're going to do. This is how they're going to do it. And I'll throw the link to the report in the, in the description so you can read the actual report. This is just a website, um, but there's an actual written report that shows how they're, they're able to do this. And way back, the day after... The day after we said this was going to happen. The day before this, we, you know, we had made the allegation on the 18th of June that this could very well be something like this. And this is, and then, you know, we went down the road at the end of June and we looked into all sorts of other things like EMP mines and submarines and all this kind of stuff once new information started to come to light. And we kind of forgot about this just trying to do due diligence. And the one thing I'll say about EMP mines, the reason that we kind of steered away from it, the problem with EMPs is that EMPs do not play well with water. Even the biggest EMP that anybody would explode over the continental United States would not affect a single thing, even 10 feet underwater. So if you had just a, a regular swimming pool in your backyard and you decided you wanted to be safe and take all of your electronics and 
seal it up and then sink it to the bottom of your pool, those electronics would be fine. And an EMP that would be underwater on the hull of one of these ships would not, the water would dissipate the electrical charge. And it, the, the idea that it could affect and completely deaden the ship from underwater would be almost implausible. And if they somehow were able to do it above the waterline, EMPs are very hard to control. They go out in all directions, and they would have disabled other ships in the region as well. So that's why we kind of turned the page from that. It would have had to have been a very directed EMP weapon, and we don't have any evidence. We don't have anything to point to this directed EMP weapon that would have been able to disable the ship. What it's very much looking like with what the Navy has reported is that the crew of the Fitzgerald, and you can see it, were operating from bad electronics information. They were... They even said the captain plotted a track that showed it being 15, almost a mile away, 1,500 yards away. And that the junior officer of the deck, who was looking out the window, said it was not, that was not going to be the case. So I think clearly what we see here is electronics information that were not jiving with what was actually happening in reality. And then when we look at the track of the Fitzgerald, excuse me, the track of the Crystal, from Vessel Finder, we can see that that's being transmitted from a Class B transponder, which would tell you that that's a spoof. That there would be no way that ship would have anything other than a Class A transponder. And we can see when the hack attack stops, it was much later. It was all the way back at the 255 time period when it starts the information that Vessel Finder is getting from AIS switches from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. And it's, uh, I'm trying to see if I, I brought up that, uh, that article. It was where the, uh, the Russians showed all of those ships over in the Black Sea that were all of a sudden inland. And I probably didn't bring it up. I forgot to bring it up. But there's an article out there that you can find that shows the, uh, it was a year or two ago that all of a sudden a bunch of ships turning into the Black Sea thought they were inland at an airport and they rebooted the entire systems aboard the ships and they still showed that. So it's, you know, it's a very real thing. This is kind of gone from beyond the idea of theoretical what could have possibly happened to more than likely this is what the U.S. Navy doesn't want anybody to know, that their ships are this vulnerable. You know, and they've made this allegation, too, that they were able to do this to the McCain in some fashion, be able to show that the ship was someplace that it wasn't, or show to that ship that it hit, the, uh, the MC Alnick, that they weren't on a collision course. That's why they didn't change direction at all. I mean, it was a five-minute event. It was a less than five-minute event. From the time there was any issue aboard the bridge of the McCain to the time of the collision is less than five minutes. And with and they had four different people hands-on. How can you make the allegation that's dereliction of duty? I'll say it again. I know I've said it a thousand times. And when you saw the actions of the crew of the Fitzgerald after the, the collision, you know, getting the dogging wrenches and closing the hatches and saving their, uh, um, their crewmates and how the crewmates were... The, the ship people aboard the ship responded in such an organized and decided way to get out of there that that only seven Paris shows exactly how incredibly well trained that crew was. They knew exactly what they needed to do in the event of an emergency. You cannot, and I still think this is a strange. This is a 2014 article, and look at the ships that they're showing. That would be vulnerable. These are destroyers. I can't make out that number down there to, of what that is. DDG-105, maybe? And then maybe that's uh, way back there, 109. I'm not really sure. But they're clearly American destroyers. 2014, this article came out. Talk about prophetic. But yeah, I'll put this down, and you can read this for yourself. And if you want to look at all these other articles, just Google Chinese satellite hack. How many different times it's happened over the years. 
And the same people that made that um, article that I just showed you have made this allegation, and this was just this last month. So, you know, this has never been, I've never once covered this issue with Russian hacking or the election, because I, I just think it's baloney. If they were going to hack, they would have hacked both, you know. And if they had a design on one person over the other, I've always made the allegation they're republicrats, you know. That's why I wasn't involved with either party. What, would, uh, what bothered me most was the uh, group of people in this country that were quintessentially very, very suspicious of the government, very anti-government, very libertarian, inside the Republican Party were believing something about a current person running that was absolutely not true about him. So, but we're not going to go down politics. Anyway, but just this was the, the overall direction of this video was that the first thing, the very first thing I thought was Chinese hacking was satellite um, discrepancies that they didn't know where they were and when you look in the report now you can see it 19 June two days after so anyway like share subscribe thank you so much I appreciate all of the support please support Jennifer Hammonds too she's going through some rough stuff um, catching a lot of grief for speaking her mind basically and if you can't come to YouTube and speak your mind and speak what you believe is the truth without continually being trolled and being called all sorts of filthy names, um, you know, that's going to be a sad day in America. So she's, uh, she's barely hanging on, a lot of personal issues going on, and uh, pray for her, support her. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Go to her site, you can find it in any of her descriptions, and just buy something from her. I'm not trying to, you know... It's makeup. I don't, what I know about it could fit in a thimble with acres to spare. But, you know, if you've got a, a woman in your life, I've got my better half and two daughters, you know, and you can help a patriot, you can help somebody that's, that's trying to sound the alarm and get honor and decency done for these sailors. And you can have that be something achieved along with doing something nice for Valentine's Day for your, you know, loved ones. You know, that's a win-win. You know, and that's one less thing that Amazon and Jeff Bezos doesn't have. Don't get me started on him. So, anyway, Jennifer Hammonds, um, standing up for the sailors. Uh, Third Eye Radio Network, don't think we have forgotten about you. We are definitely going to get together and get an in, uh, interview done. I'm glad to see that uh, James Munder is back and speaking. So, it seems like for now everything is good to go for the moment. So... Thank you all for sticking with us. We really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you.